Black Brilliance, shining a memoir of motivational moments found within as defining the purpose of one's humanity. Today, I introduce you to Leroy Comrie. Hi, this is Leroy Comrie. I'm honored to be New York State Senator for the 14th Senate District in Queens. And this is Black Brilliance. Black brilliance is found in the man, Leroy Comrie, senator and an extraordinary human being. Let us focus on a life lived in such a way that shines the inner peace of black brilliance. Leroy Comrie, Senator Leroy Comrie. I'm honored to be the New York State Senator for the 14th Senate District, parts of Southeast Queens, Laurelton, Cambria Heights, Queens Village, Hollis, St. Albans, parts of Kew Gardens Hills, Briarwood, Jamaica, and Hollis Hills. Uh, I've been serving in the New York State Senate since 2015, and um, I'm honored to be chair of the Corporations Committee, which uh, deals with issues on from the MTA to the Thruway Authority to all of the corporations' oversight issues and authorities that are within New York State. I was honored to, and I didn't know it at the time, you know, as a youth growing up in St. Albans, the Martyr Episcopal Church in, in our community right on Farmers Boulevard, right off Dunkirk, uh, one block um, north of Linden Boulevard. Um, that's the church my parents uh, were affiliated with, so that was a church I was at every Sunday. And, and you know, I did, did, there was a, the first, I want to say, defining moment became when I realized that the church parents were so involved in making sure that we were children that had self-esteem, that we had, you know, that we were nurtured, that, that we had an opportunity to be involved in church activities. Uh, you know, we had to, I had to go to church every day and then on Saturdays and, you know, went to Sunday school and, you know, I realized that, um, you know, through the efforts of the, the parents in the church that they wanted to make sure that all the children of the church had a safe haven. You know, growing up when I did, um, there was a lot of street activity. You now it's worse now, but even back then it was starting to get really bad and so we made the parents of the church just order their own time without pay without reward without even you know advertising it just made the church a safe place to be and i, was, I have to say i was about 12 when i first realized that um that there was an opportunity for me to be nurtured because i was getting hormonal and my parents who were in, you know came here from jamaica west indies wasn't having it and I needed other role models, you know, I needed other folks to talk to because, you know, they were very strict and they were very rigid. They didn't understand, you know, the, the, the intricacies or, or the morals of living in New York City. You know, they, they had old school ideas and I needed a little bit of breathing room. So I found, you know, many folk in the church that were willing to talk to me, guide me, help my hormonal stuff from going out of control. You know, it was just a, it was just a wonderful place. Uh, for us to have safe experiences, safe people to talk to, mentors, and role models to follow. I want all those watching these episodes to be able to identify who it is they will become. Hoping this program of Black Brilliance helps you to find the greater within that would set you on a course that maybe no one has ever seen before may you become the innermost best self that God ordained for you to be. My family and uh, let's have Jamaican parents, you know, they, they valued family connection, they valued uh, relationships, they valued making sure that you had people that would be in your corner no matter what. And you know, that, that was embedded in me um, throughout my entire life. You know, as I said earlier, my parents were always bringing people over, um, always going out to visit people, always making connections with family. My dad was an amateur, you know, genealogist to say. 
you know, he would always find comrades and make sure and figure out how they were related, you know, and, and bring them over to the house. And we, you know, wound up having uh, relationships with folks. He was always finding out who his father was related to um, that he knew from Jamaica. And, and, you know, we would go visit people. And um, so he was, you know, always making sure that we had a, a, a deep family connection. He was always talking in the house. We always had, you know, family time and, and opportunities to talk as a family, either individually or collectively. He was big on a, you know, Sunday dinner and all of us together. Um, you know, my mom was always working. Um, you know, she worked at, in, in the house as a hairdresser at home for our formative years. So we always had a chance to talk to her clients that, you know, while we we're hanging out in the basement watching them getting their hair done. So, you know, I always had a chance to listen to people and it developed in me a, a keen understanding that if you're a good listener, you can learn things and you can create um, opportunities. You can take that wisdom that people are imparting to you and, and be a more informed person. So the, my, my family strong, you know, I've been honored to be married for 30 years, um, you know, and it'll be 31 this year in July. Um, I have two children that, uh, uh, you know, we've had, um, that, that we have a good, strong relationship with. It's only gotten stronger since the pandemic and we're all stuck in the house together, but we figured out a way to make sure that we're taking care of each other. We're talking to each other. We're trying to make sure that our, our major needs are, you know, all accommodated as we are trying to, you know, move, maneuver through the same space in the house. Um, and making sure that their creative opportunities are taken care of as well. And that my wife, you know, that she feels fulfilled in what she's doing and uh, she feels contributing. Um, and she's not, you know, she's, she's a great writer. She's a great editor. Family is, is key to me. I don't know if you guys remember um, Cor Corvettes um, in Green Acres Mall. They used to sell the cheap men's suits and I hated my Easter suit one year. He beat me right there in his Corvettes. <laughs> he was like, you gonna take this suit? You gonna wear this suit? <laughs> there wasn't no, there wasn't no 10 minute beating. It was more like a, you know, but to me it felt like an hour, but he you know, did not hesitate to let folk know when he was upset that he was not going to hesitate to not spare the rod or spoil the child. <laughs> that was that was my defining moment. <laughs> <laughs>